Ladies and gentlemen, today we begin part three of our special investigative series that focuses on the final warning that was left behind by the late Dr. Thomas R. Horn and what now resides in what would become his last and final book. And we start right now. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Skywatch TV. I'm Joe Artis Horn. Before we dive into today's program, there's something I want you to see. Watch this. In 2023, following one of the most legendary and prophetic ministerial careers the world has ever seen, my father, the late Dr. Thomas R. Horn, began what would become his final book. After collaborating with Defender Publishing's Ali Anderson and myself, he had just completed his master manuscript before his untimely passing in October of last year. During his final conversations, he was still emphasizing that this message had to get out, that it was of paramount importance that the world was made aware of what was coming. Society has absolutely no idea what they're embracing, what they've invited in, even welcomed it as the future savior of humanity. This will ultimately be the one thing that brings about our own demise. If humanity survives, it will unequivocally alter life as we know it. By the time people realize the danger that they've embraced, it will be too late. It will have become unstoppable. Updating social credit score, citizen 1934265. One final book. One final warning. The world is not ready for what is coming. Dr. Thomas R. Horn, Joe Artis Horn, Ali Anderson. Summoning the Demon, coming March 2024 from Defender Publishing. Wow. Absolutely unbelievable. One final book, one final warning. But before we get into today's topic of conversation, I want to introduce who's in studio. We're joined today by our dear friends, Derek and Sharon Gilbert, Allie Anderson, my beautiful mother, Juanita Horn, my beautiful <laughs> wife, Catherine Horn, and Donna Howell. And they're here to help me champion the timely message that now resides in the new book from Defender Publishing, Summoning the Demon, Artificial Intelligence and the Image of the Beast by Dr. Thomas R. Horn, myself, and Ali Anderson. Ladies and gentlemen, if you go back to the archives over the last couple of weeks, you'll get caught up to speed in what has been an absolutely three-dimensional conversation on where artificial intelligence is now, what it's being used on, why humanity is vastly already dependent on it, and we're only seeing that trajectory worsen in terms of our dependency on supercomputers, quantum computing, artificial intelligence, leaning into it to problem solve for us, college students using it to turn in midterm papers, people developing relationships with what I believe are sentient beings via this technology in replacement of the need mm -hmm. to go out and date or to have mm -hmm. commune with one's spouse, etc. It's so, at this point, legionous. Yeah. The number of layers to this, our banking systems, our war mechanisms, government intelligence, surveillance, which gave rise to some of the conversation we've been having on the ethical boundaries mm -hmm. and applications of its use. The total lack of ability to adjudicate where this technology is coming in terms of personal character assassination, uh, brand equity damage, deep faking somebody else's loved one or the leader of a prominent ministry, the damage that that may do initially, and then of course how that leads to basically empathy or a lack of sympathy or just complacency. People have seen everything fake being done by everyone on earth, so everything is fake, yeah. and it brings in this smorgasbord 
of cries for people to be digitally authenticated to protect mm. themselves and their assets. Yep. Now we've touched on some of the ethical issues, Ali, surrounding the progress of AI. However, all of the experts, despite all of these warnings, are saying that it's here to stay. So what are some of the tangible threats that people have already experienced? Where is this technology going? Well, when you look at the threats that are posed by AI, there are a couple of different ways uh, that you have to view it. Number one, what does AI do when it tries to have a personality, which is a scary topic that we were talking about uh, in the green room before this, and there's, there's a lot that we can say here in a minute. But before that, I want to go down a list of ways that people may not be aware we are reliant upon it. Right. Because it's hard to perceive the threat if you don't realize it's in your life. You're already counting on it. Yeah. So number one, many people are unaware that AI is very intertwined with our global banking system, mm -hmm. yeah. um, global supply chains and vital resources. So this is, oh, yeah. and this isn't just where you think, oh, well, I go to my local grocery store. This market is being facilitated through an internet-based yeah. AI-assisted construct. Mm -hmm. construct, exactly. Right. So it is, it is very vital right now to um, important medical resources, important medical supplies, medications, right. uh, mm -hmm. necessities such as groceries and things like this. It's involved with actual medical innovations and processes, mm -hmm. medical um, supply chains that are behind the scenes, not you ordering your medicine at home, but things that are to the hospital and things right. like that. Power, water, internet, and utility grids. This means that in the wintertime, your heat. This isn't just, oh, I can live without the internet. Right. This is, can you live without your heat when it's 20 degrees outside? Right. Yep. Education processes and curriculum, access to education through software programs that students are using, communications, personal and official. So this includes uh, official and military, governmental communications. Absolutely. Transportation, which is both personal and public, military, and even air traffic. Mm -hmm. Military operations and matters of national security. And there's more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> These guys can right. add a lot of things to that list. <laughs> right. This is a brief list of ways that we're already relying on it. So when you realize, okay, it's here, it's integrated in what we count on every single day to survive, right. it's here to stay, at least for now, then it's important to look at what is the nature of this thing we're interacting with. Right, right, right. And so when you look at a handful of things which have already happened, this isn't me speculating, this is, right. uh, I'll tell you some things that have already happened, and, and you'll see kind of what happens when AI is trying to Show Emulate. itself a personality. Right. Right. And again, as Derek mentioned earlier, we don't know what's happening in that black box. Yeah. But it does seem to be that this strict programming they put in seems to always want to take on a personality. Why is that? Right. right. So, for example, there was a big online supplier. Everybody uses it. It's a household name. I'm not going to name it. But this particular online provider, you can authenticate your device to the software provided by this large company, mm -hmm. and they will play movies for you, music, things like that, online streaming, and also do other things that you can connect through the smart technology that this company uses. There was an incident where a person was receiving a package. The driver who was delivering the package thought he heard a racial slur. Now, Later, it was actually proven that there was not a racial slur even said. But without so much as uh, an inquiry, this company shut this man down. They froze his account. They froze his devices. They froze all of these things. Now, he was okay in general in that he had to find another place to get his things for a few days while they were straightening out his account. He had to live without those devices for a few days. But what if that AI technology had had access to the electricity grid to his home right. or something like that. Without any kind of trial or, or, right. or checks right. and balances, right. this man was arbitrarily taken down when actually he hadn't done anything wrong. Right. So that's something to be very concerned about when we're giving something that's not human that kind of leeway to take right. that kind of control yeah. over our lives. The point is, you might be thinking, I don't understand. The delivery guy thought he heard something and then the guy's account got frozen. What you have to understand is that the driver thought he heard a racial slur, which actually turns out came from a, a talking doorbell that operates on AI that said something like, have a nice day. Okay. And the delivery guy heard this, thought he heard something else, reported it within his software, and the algorithms that decide whether or not you're still allowed to participate in this commerce right. shut him down. 
And it wasn't until he appealed it with this company and went through all these emails of right, protest right, right. and things, they mm -hmm. finally reinstalled him. But what if that had been his power? What if that had been the rights to important diabetic medication? Right, there right, are right. a lot of things Gosh. that people are relying on that we can't have arbitrary AI systems just shutting down. And right. you and I both know right. that every time there's an algorithm that doesn't like something we say, right. we, yep, we, we get, get shut get down shut too. Down. Yes. So it happens. Absolutely. Well, and like Catherine was just saying, a lot of homes now are becoming smart homes. Everything yep. from mm -hmm. security to surveillance to the automatic yeah. delivery of groceries, everything yep. is smart, everything is smart. And that surveillance, there are cameras right. everywhere. Yeah. And that's yeah. that's where the concern for that kind of thing comes in. Now, I've got a long list here, and we don't have time to do the whole thing today, but it is in the book. I'll say, though, that there was a situation, and again, I'm not going to name the name of the company, but there was a prominent online company who put up a chatbot who was supposed to interact on social media and portray some kind of a personality. And this went awry really quickly. Mm -hmm. They took him down. They said, wow, this is, he's acting like a teenager. That's a quote. And wow. he was he was in trouble huh. for misinformation, for, report, for obtaining and re-reporting fake news, mm -hmm. for using and misusing slang. I mean, his personality just kind of went out of control and they had to take that down. Now, luckily on that one, they actually had a kill switch, but there's so much of this we don't have a kill switch on. Mm -hmm. right. There are other times like when we can see these self-driving cars that have faulty parameters mm -hmm. where they understand by the construct of their programming what is a pedestrian on the side of the road. They understand what is a bicycle on the side of the road. But what is a pedestrian walking a bicycle not on the crosswalk? It didn't have parameters for that and it hit and killed somebody. Oh, wow. So you can't foretell every single thing an AI is mm -hmm. going to encounter right. Right. and it's operating the way it operates and we right. find out in retrospect, oh, Guess what we forgot to program in? Yeah. Right, but instead of slowing any of this, the calls for right. improving it are already in effect. Mm -hmm. right. right, and I'll probably just say two more things. Number one, if you look up how often the AI softwares that people have brought into their homes have already had complaints that they flirt with the person's spouses. There are a lot of people saying, this AI has been completely creepy to my spouse. One woman who sadly... Her husband actually um, died by suicide, but this AI had been flirting with him and being really creepy to him, struck up a friendship, and when the man said to the chatbot, I'm thinking about suicide, instead of saying, hold on, don't do it, it actually provided a list of mm -hmm. ways the man could do it and said Jesus. that if he were to kill himself, that he and the AI get this quote, I find this so creepy, that they would live together as one person in paradise. Now, can we just remember oh, what, what Jesus said on the cross to oh the man my next gosh. to him? Today you will be oh with me in paradise. Gosh. What is this weird, nefarious personality? Oh, oh it's literally anti-Christ. It is. It's it is. very is bizarre. Wow. Very bizarre. You can oh be sure gosh. that that was not programmed into the, uh, the oh. algorithm. The neural network oh, developed no. this on its own and perhaps with some outside influence. No. Now, granted, this was not a mental health chatbot. So in defense of the company who put the chatbot out there, they dialed some things back and, and changed some of the things. But, but when these things are given their own rapid deep learning construct for how they go in and morph as they learn, there's no pre-programming all the responses. There's no right. controlling that something like that wouldn't happen again. And I'll just say one last thing. I've got a list here, but we're not going to have time for all of it. And it's there all was, in the book. It is all in the book, yeah. There is one lady who actually wanted to build her resume online, and she uploaded a picture of herself. And the AI was supposed to go in and make it look more professional. It was supposed to take a regular selfie and make it a professional picture. This was a woman of ethnicity, and this program made her white. <gasps> so, and, yeah. and changed her bone structure to look more white. Now, yeah. what is the deal when we have an mm. AI that could possibly be racist? Ah, well, what happened? Wow. It's scary. What, what, what's interesting is that that also goes the other way. A, uh, an AI that is powered by one of the most powerful technological companies on the planet actually goes the other way when you ask it to generate images of certain types of people. Give me a picture of a white cowboy. I'm sorry, I can't do that race-based stuff. But when you change the parameters, suddenly people of color are there. So the biases that we yeah. humans possess, yes. uh, which are often the product of, of hatreds that mm -hmm. demons That's will try right. to exploit Absolutely. to keep us fighting with one another, mm -hmm. are being manifest in these tech devices that are supposed to be completely unbiased and objective. What's really bizarre is that as we're recording this just a month ago, one of the more prominent companies in the development of artificial intelligence, a company called Anthropic, mm -hmm. which uh, is valuation jumped from like four and a half billion a year ago to about 18 billion today. 
Wow. Major, major tech investors in this company. They did some research to find out if their own uh, chatbots can hide their malevolent intent. Oh. And that whether these intents could be uh, corrected through current state-of-the-art safety training techniques, and they concluded, we find that such backdoor behavior, such bad behavior, can be made persistent so that it is not removed by standard safety training techniques. In other words, these guys using best practices, Mm -hmm. the guys who are coding these AIs, find that when we do what we know to be the state of the art, we still can't stop these things from Mm -hmm. hiding evil intent and Mm -hmm. doing bad things. You know, oftentimes we see the future through film and television. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And there's a yeah. well-known movie that has a great um, overarching babysitting AI called Aria. And Aria's programming tells her to keep the nation safe, mm-hmm. the nation being the United States. She somehow puts it together based on activities that the president and Congress are going to be involved in something that will endanger us. She actually sets it up to kill the president. And the entire cabinet. Yeah, thinking that that's the best way to protect the nation. Right. That sounds to me like on the first show we were talking about the list actually given to my dad by a chatbot, unintended consequences. Uh Super intelligent systems Mm -hmm. may interpret instructions or goals differently from what was intended, Mm -hmm. leading to unexpected and potentially harmful outcomes. Mm -hmm. And that's, again, by an AI chatbot's own confession. Yeah. Really quickly, I'm going to take the occasion to do a little poll here. How many of you would like to have every one of Tom Horn's book series throughout the history of Skywatch Television? Well, ladies and gentlemen, we want to make you aware of how you can get your copy of Summoning the Demon along with the definitive Skywatch TV collection that includes all of Dr. Thomas Horn's greatest hits, all of his book series right now in the Summoning the Demon Super Collection. This amazing collection includes Dr. Thomas Horn's final book, Summoning the Demon, Artificial Intelligence and the Image of the Beast, that reveals how tech singularity will bring an all-powerful artificial mind to life. The trigger event that will make 666 the mark of the beast mandatory overnight. What the future of a marked society will look like. The new face of transhuman supernatural warfare and how Christians must prepare for what is coming. But this incredible collection also includes, for a limited time, the brand new Dr. Thomas Horn Definitive Skywatch TV Collection. This unimaginable and historical TV anthology is valued at $99.95 all by itself. It contains a total of 96 episodes, over 45 hours of content on eight DVDs, and is not available anywhere else or online, and includes classic series like Zenith 2016, The Milieu, Belly of the Beast, Saboteurs, The Wormwood Prophecy, The Messenger, Zeitgeist 2025, Legion, and more. But we're still not finished. You'll also receive Trajectory, Tracking the Approaching Tribulation Storm. This unprecedented masterpiece by legendary authors Dr. Thomas Horn, Terry James, Tim Moore, and others provides in-depth analysis of emerging topics like pandemic tidal waves, catastrophic weather changes, Mideast malevolence, and so much more. This unprecedented collection sold separately holds a retail value of over $140. Yours now for your donation of only $39.99 plus shipping and handling. So don't delay. You can scan the QR code on your screen right now using the camera app on your phone for instant access to this special collection. You can also visit us at skywatchtvstore.com or call 1-844-750-4985 and ask for the Summoning the Demon Super Collection now. Absolutely unbelievable. You know, Ali was talking before the break, and you said something about the AI confessing something, and that made me think, what if the church of the AI mainframe, that you go to confessional with your chatbot? Oh, wow. Oh, no. And you just thought of that. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. You think it's private. No. Yeah. But it's not. You know, we've talked a lot about people having reservations, even the people developing this technology. 
kind of feel that it's a form of arms race and are saying, we don't really trust the outcome, but we have no choice but to stay with this. But there really are a lot of people, lay people, civilians, that actually mm -hmm. engage right now in AI technology mm -hmm. and want it to be developed. Mm -hmm. You know, when you, for example, are an isolated person or someone who feels that life has become dull and you're looking for adventure, perhaps you're a married person who would find, let's say, an extramarital situation with the use of a digital device to be safer than stepping out and you know, networking with other people online and then meeting up with them at coffee shops, et cetera, or the social inconveniences mm -hmm. of having to build relationships with other people. Maybe it's not always your movie. Maybe you have to share what you're going to have for dinner. Maybe it's not what you want 24 hours a day all the time at your behest. Yeah. And people are seeking interactions that they feel they're not being provided with in real life. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't know how many of you have played any or seen young people playing video games or um, building avatars on these social media platforms mm -hmm. where they very much design a character. Mm -hmm. yep. They drag and drop the hair, they pick and choose the eyes, the size of the body, the gender, the et cetera, the amount of muscle mass, whether they're throwing fireballs or wielding a machine gun or whatever it is. They're building these avatars and these games, a lot of them online are subscription based. Mm -hmm. And something that has occurred to me that is absolutely, if it hasn't already started, is going to, is basically build your own relationship online. It'll be a monthly yeah. subscription. Absolutely. You'll be able to tailor make the person you're interacting with. The technology already exists to use photographs from people you already know. Mm. Yep. This opened door for creeps to interact with people they work with that they don't even know personally. Mm -hmm. And then it's being run by artificial intelligence and even yep. voice masking mm -hmm. that literally sounds identical to this person. They've got a three-dimensional relationship with somebody they're in love with and this person may not even know. Or it could be a relationship with someone you've known and loved who's now gone. That, that's exactly mm -hmm. right, Sharon. Yeah. So the conversation around having revitalized conversations with deceased loved ones mm -hmm. that you miss and how that might actually stunt yeah. your ability to truly heal as a human being, mm -hmm. the natural, normal, plausible, gravitous weight yeah. behind overcoming or moving beyond the arrested feelings that you have mourning this person. Yeah. Now, couple and even that, therapists saying that this might be a form of therapy. Uh, yes. Now, couple that with the uh, story that Ellie related before the break. Right. Hey, if you, uh, you know, terminate yourself, we can live together in paradise. Right. Yep. Yeah. And, here, oh my and here's how good this technology is. My staff sent me a, a, mm -hmm. a, an audio recording using one of these chat bots where they typed in a manuscript. They loaded in one minute of me doing a commercial from Skywatch Television and sent me a sample of an entire paragraph of me talking. Friends, it's Joe Horn talking down to the nuance, the cadence. Yep down to the phraseology, even when I pause and do my hands. It absolutely was Joe Horn reading, friends, it was not me talking. And it was so convincingly me that I sent it to my family and I said, do you think this is me? And only my mother and my siblings could go right there. There's a half syllable where I can tell that it's technology. And I was told that it was because they only gave it a one minute sample. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, if they had given it an hour of me talking, it would be absolutely unequivocally indistinguishable from me. Can you imagine world leaders? Yep. There's a lot of samples of those. Oh, my goodness. Oh, so I know. You can, you can make it look like she and China did something. You can make it look like yep. you could yep. start a war. You could absolutely. Start, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you could start you a could. war. Which, again, goes back to what we talked about right. last week, the need to be digitally authenticated. This would, of course, mm -hmm. include global leaders. But before we run out of time, Derek and Sharon, I want to open up another stream of thoughts on this, because it's something Sharon said, I think last week, talking about the need to be enhanced to even keep up right. with this mm -hmm. technology. And yeah. it harkens my imagination back to a lot of work that my father and people like you guys mm -hmm. have both put in over, Donna Howell put into the conversation of transhumanism mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. over the last decade. But for those who have never heard, just briefly, what is transhumanism and how long do you think that will be facing the first human enhancement projects? I think the first transhuman moment was in the Garden of Eden, when Adam was told, Adam and Eve, you shall be as gods. That was the temptation. That temptation has been there all along. Yeah. And mankind only recently got the ability to, other than using magic and invoking demons directly, mm -hmm. now uses chemistry mm -hmm. 
changing DNA beginning in the early 19th century with eugenics. Mm. And, and I think, as you said, you bring in demons, and, and that is a really interesting observation. Our friend, deliverance minister, the late Russ Isdar, uh, said that there were some people that he worked with in a deliverance setting who were being possessed by demons who didn't want to be delivered because they enjoyed the feeling of power that it gave them. Mm -hmm. oh. wow. They were chosen ones. Right. They felt, they felt special. special. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Wow. And that's the drive to feel wow. more special mm -hmm. than we are. Because we lack Jesus Christ. If you are not yeah. saved by Jesus Christ, you lack that. You feel like you need something more. Right. And then there are others who want to live forever. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. But without that whole sin thing. Mm -hmm. I, I want to live forever in this body. Yeah, yeah. I, I was talking with a, with a wise old pastor who's become a friend uh, just yesterday about this, uh, Leo Shoemaker. Uh. Uh, he's in his 80s, you know, good old Missouri boy. He says, well, I'm already going to live forever. But, he said, but why do I want to live forever in this body? Yeah. And uh, he, he gets it, mm -hmm. and he understood right away why this issue is linked with artificial intelligence. It's another way of becoming as gods, trying yes, to fulfill uh, the promise, right. the lie from Eden. Yes, and those avatars that you were talking about a few minutes ago, they could be indwelled by our consciousness, right? Well, I could live forever as my avatar. Right. How many 10-year-olds wouldn't love that? Mm. Well, or the need, though. It, it requires the need, though, for humankind to integrate with technology because mm -hmm. we in our finite bodies are failing. Oh, that if is you want coming. your subconsciousness to live on beyond you, Mm -hmm. This is necessary. Yeah. That's the drive in the World Economic Forum and other global governance entities. That's where it's all going. One Absolutely. thing I'll mention that he did put in the book as a warning, and that is that when we get to the day that they are offering us the option to upload ourselves into an avatar mm -hmm. or some kind of a computer, even if it manages to create a duplication of our personality, it is not us. No, exactly. right. We are not going to live forever in this body as it right. is. And we can try to do that on our terms, but it isn't going to happen. Mm -hmm. And that warning is in the book. Mm -hmm. I have one last thought that I maybe would tie in. And that is that um, I, I have done business with the Amish. And um, I'm talking about the true Amish because there are some that do engage in cars and phones, but the true Amish... Technology. Exactly. They don't have their own phones, but they'll borrow mine. Mm -hmm. They'll ride in my car. I've done that before. Mm -hmm. uh, but their, their concept behind that is not necessarily that they see that it's evil. It's just that it becomes necessary so that today's convenience becomes tomorrow's necessary. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's why they avoid it. Yeah, yep. Yep. Well, ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, we're all out of time again this week. But join us next week when we discuss how AI will play into prophetic end times events, the beast system, and the abomination of desolation. It's not a program you're going to want to miss. For everybody here in studio, everybody on panel, thanks again, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us. I'm Joe Artis Horn. Keep your eyes on the prize, which is Jesus Christ. We'll be back.